Thank okay. you, Dr. Yakovo. I don't know if Dr. Spargas wants to say a few words about our yeah. new valve. Yakos, you can you can do that. Okay. So we were we were really honored uh, to treat uh, the first patients in Europe uh, with the new platform of the Edwards uh, valve, the Resilia valve, and we had a great uh, outcomes uh, for those patients. The Resilia valve is, um, uh, has a new technology, a tissue, that enables the dry uh, storage of the valve, and uh, it is also calcium blocking technology. The, also, the innovative is that uh, we have uh, at the bigger dimensions, the 29 millimeters, we have um, the uh, we have an ultra the ultra technology also so a skirt that we uh, also took advantage um, and we will see uh, for next uh, patient that we are going to present. Here we see the innovative uh, tissue technology of Resilia, um, leading to 72% uh, lower calcium content. And um, this is a state-of-the-art new publication showing that with Resilia, we have achieved uh, lower mean gradients, so also better hemodynamics. So we'll proceed uh, with our case, 85-year-old male. Um, I, we would like to also to see in the background the case maybe as live in the box. If it is possible. So 85-year-old male patient uh, BMI for 26.8. Short of breath on exertion, especially in the last four months. NIHA stadium at two to three. In the trans thoracic uh, echo, a severe aortic stenosis. We see the numbers. Uh, LV ejection fraction of 40%. Dilated in hypertrophic LV with impressive uh, diameters. Also a dilated aorta with 45 millimeters, a moderate to severe TR with possible uh, pacemaker electrode involvement, a mild MR and RVSP for 23 millimeters. The medical history, uh, permanent pacemaker, uh, hypertonus, and problems with thyroid. We see his medication. The Euroscore, was, uh, Euroscore 2 was 9.16%. Is it possible to? Yeah. OK, thank you. So, um, it is important to, uh, as I said, to notice that um, the Resilia valve has a dry tissue storage, so we need only uh, two minutes to place the valve in the uh, water infusion and uh, it is ready. We don't need a longer preparation. Um, beginning the intervention, we um, use two probe lights, one in, uh, at 10 o'clock and one at 2 o'clock, before uh, introducing our sheath. Um, we see um, a severe stenosis, as I said, with a Vmax for 4.23 meter per second. Here's the ECG of the patient and uh, the x-ray. We see the uh, leads in proper position of the pacemaker. CT, heavily calcified by caspid uh, valve, probably of type 0. And we see also a calcium region um, diving in the direction of the mitral valve, which should we uh, take care of. In the live in the box case, we see, um, as I mentioned before, the um, dry uh, storage uh, uh, tissue of the valve, it needs two minutes, as we said, um, to place it in the water. So this is the innovation. Moving on with our case, we see the heavily calcified 
bicuspid aortic valve with a large annulus, the diameter 31 to 35 millimeters and an area for, for, uh, for 8.97 <laughs> square centimeters. Um, maybe we should uh, ask uh, the colleagues um, now what would be their thoughts. We have a bicuspid valve heavily calcified with a very large annulus. Discussion. So uh, I didn't see. The, so the, the LVOT measurement uh, was. Uh, That's coming. Yeah. Sorry. So um, this is a supraannular uh, measurement, uh, four millimeters from the annulus, and seven. See a diameter from 38 uh, millimeters. And I don't know if we have no. That's all that we have from our CT measurements. So when you're dealing with a bicuspid valve, you always look for uh, uh, what kind of uh, bicuspid is, and also you look for the LVOT, if it's tapered, non-tapered. So um, uh, this, all this information will help you guide the procedure. Uh, so Michali, uh, how do you, do you normally approach these patients? Yeah, uh, it looks like I got type 0 with a lot of calcium on the leaflets um, and severe stenosis. Uh, definitely um, uh, challenging anatomy uh, and fairly big annulus. Uh, as we saw, it's over 800 uh, millimeters square. Uh, so technically speaking, what one could think uh, from the get-go about um, implanting a large valve, um, either um, uh, one of the uh, very large um, uh, MyVal 30.5 or 32 to consider that, or a Sapien, uh, the Resilia Ultra 29 with a lot of plus on the balloon. Uh, uh, but uh, um, I'm not sure about the a Evolute 34 in this case. I think it was also horizontal anatomy and there was also other issues that were against an Evolute valve. Um, uh, and. Um, uh, but definitely in all bicuspid valves, we tend to do a pre-dilatation that will always uh, give us a hint about the um, uh, degree of um, uh, stenosis and uh, how well uh, this valve will behave during uh, actual valve deployment. Uh, so I think uh, balloon pre-dilatation in this case would be very uh, important. I, I think this is, very, this is param of paramount importance to do a pre-dilatation with yes. uh, the nominal uh, balloon and. Uh, and according to 12 VOT uh, measurement, maybe undersized a little bit, but um, yeah. We were indeed uh, between two valves, the my valve and the um, Resilia valve. Maybe we could use the uh, new innovation of the skirt in the bigger uh, diameter. Um, and we decided to, to, to do a valvuloplasty and according to the um, outcome, we will decide also the, the type of the valve that we were going to implant. So, moving forward. The coronaries um, of the patient didn't show something um, crucial. The axis, the peripheral axis was also uh, feasible. See the right side. And uh, we see the heavily, the heavy calcified um, aortic valve, um, and we also see a mild um, to moderate uh, regurgitation. We wanted initially to place a, a sentinel protection, but uh, due to anatomical um, reasons, there is also uh, calcified. We decided uh, that it was not in the, fav in the favor of the patient. We check also the um, the pigtail position before placing our uh, extra stiff uh, the safari wire, and now we see the valvuloplasty. It is a 25 millimeter uh, balloon of Edwards. We see that we see the ceiling of the valve, 
which uh, enables us to think about uh, using the 29 millimeter um, Resilia valve. And we should also bear in mind that it is uh, a bicuspid uh, uh, valve. So although we, so the, the measurements of the very big annulus, uh, due to these um, aforesaid factors, we um, were thinking about using the, the Resilia 29 millimeters uh, valve. I don't know if Dr. So Spargas has was, a comment. That, that was the decisive moment uh, of the procedure where the decision was made about what valve we're going to use. We had available all the valves, uh, and if we, if we stuck to the CT scan information, uh, that would be um, uh, my valve, probably the very large one, the 32.5, according to the CT data. Uh, clearly, um, uh, the perimeter was uh, too large, uh, more than 100 millimeters for uh, any self-expandable valve. But because of the bicuspid anatomy, and especially the type 0 bicuspid anatomy with a lot of calcium, and from our previous experience, we knew that uh, such anatomy is um, it's very likely to prove to be sealed by uh, much smaller balloon expandable valves, and this is exactly what happened here. So this is a 25 millimeter balloon, and you can see it offers complete sealing. You don't see any contrast going back to the ventricle, which means that the 29 millimeter Ezeria valve with the, the sked will be super sufficient to uh, do the job. If someone was going blindly, according to the CT scan with the 32.5 my valve, uh, I think the, the effect will be catastrophic. Uh, also, we could comment maybe that there is some proximity of the uh, leaflet, the uh, severely calcified leaflet towards the left um, uh, coronary uh, sinus uh, and towards the left main. Uh, essentially, it fills the whole sinus uh, of Alsalva. Uh, there is good flow over it into the left main, but again, uh, we this uh, 25 millimeter balloon seems to be uh, very adequate uh, in terms of uh, sealing the valve. Uh, so we so the 29 the is, is, the, is the way to go in this case. Maybe a 34 Evolute uh, would be sufficient as well. Uh, probably in our center we would use a, an Evolute uh, 34, but uh, yeah. About the uh, proximity uh, of the left main, yes. Michael commented earlier, um, I think this is a 2D imaging that um, is um, uh, misleading us because on the CT scan uh, imaging, the planning, the distance from the left main to the other side of the sinus of Alsalva was like 36 or 38. Yeah. So um, I think it's the 2D imaging. That, um, uh, it's a little uh, misleading uh, us here. Good. That was the case. We also uh, did a lot of uh, different projections to be sure that there was um, adequate distance to the left main. But as Dr. Sparia said, uh, we had also this vi very important information from the CT. So um, we have. Um, he placed our valve in position. We've pulled the pigtail, and we are ready for the valve implantation. Under rapid pacing, it was a 29 millimeter Edwards uh, Resilia valve, minus four ml. It was plus plus two on the oh, Sorry, plus two, yeah, plus two. And um, we check the outcome. We see that the valve um, was not optimally um, expanded. Uh, since uh, it was also a very big annulus, we wanted uh, the maximum expansion of the valve. So we decided to proceed with the post dilation. Um, we put another two millimeters so it was um, a total sum of plus four in this post dilation under rapid pacing. And this is our final result.
the access point remained very good. And we ended, um, as Resilia platform says, with a, a very low um, uh, mean grade and a good hemodynamic result. So the, I think that this is an excellent uh, demonstration of how to, to treat the bicuspid uh, valve with such uh, large anatomy. So th this is very tricky. The valve is also a little bit horizontally. Uh, I think that this was a great demonstration with a new valve. So uh, basically it's, it's uh, the same uh, ultra device. So the, the skirt is the same. So you don't worry about uh, more, uh, more frequent uh, pacemaker implantation. Of course, this is not the case in this, in this case, but uh, yeah. So it, you, you have the same practice as the, the previous uh, ultra, right? Essentially, essentially yes, the, the platform is the same. Um, loading of the valve on the device, everything is the same. Uh, and the implantation technique is the same exactly. We don't have any. Uh, the major difference is, number one, the resilient treatment of the, of, the tip, of the leaflets. And the way the leaflets are sutured on the, on the frame, it actually allows for a bigger valve orifice, which is uh, very important for uh, smaller uh, sizes, obviously, uh, not so much for the 29, uh, but it's an important consideration as well. So, uh, the, so if you have a Resilia Ultra, it's purportedly uh, it has the, the same uh, durability as the Resilia surgical implant valves. You think? So I don't have any uh, any knowledge on this issue. Maybe Dr. Riardon can can make a comment on that. So, is the durability wise is the same? If no, we don't. We don't know. I mean, so far it looks really good. But we the seven year data from the commenced trials reported a year ago at the AATS, and so we really are only up to seven years on on Resilia. Um, you know, the seven year data is coming out on the Valus valve, the two new pericardial valves. But until we get to ten years, we don't really know. I, I, it looks very good at seven years, but again, we don't know. We'll, we'll see in a couple of years if it's going to hold up. But so far, the data is very encouraging. To me, the most encouraging thing is I like the way they redesigned the way they put their commissure post on there, and it allows it a bigger opening. I, th I think that's, a, a, that's an improvement. Okay, this is excellent. I think, uh, Michael, we, we can go, we, we can we can go proceed on. on the next case. So thank you, thank Dr. Cassianos. Thank you very much. So, uh, the next case will be presented by Dr. Stathogiannis.